In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. I have no idea why literally nobody is talking about this right now, but NASA has just set forth a new plan to inject the atmosphere with millions of tons of ice to fight climate change. So this article reads, NASA puts forth new plan to inject atmosphere with millions of tons of ice to fight climate change. So this strategy involves seeding the atmosphere with ice to prevent greenhouse gases from building up. If you don't know what the greenhouse effect is, it occurs when certain gases build up in the atmosphere, which insulate heat within it that would otherwise have escaped into space, over time this results in global warming. This technique that NASA has proposed has been suggested as a way to mitigate the effect of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. By seeding the atmosphere with particles of ice, they would freeze any vapor into ice that would otherwise have become greenhouse gases and cause it to fall back to Earth. They're saying that this is a practice called geoengineering, which is controversial due to its unpredictability of its side effects, obviously. So they think that by releasing two tons of ice particles a week could cool the atmosphere to about 1 70th of how much it's being heated. They're saying at the end of the day, it could have some measurable impact, but the danger is always there that it could lead to spiraling effects as a result. I do these daily roundups every day, so make sure you add me and come back to me tomorrow. Well, there goes the tax dollar snowing upon us again. That's what I'm going to think when I see that happen. I also have a very bad feeling that our government in our country here in America, at least, they are trying to make the air extremely toxic so that if you ever want to breathe oxygen again, you're going to have to pay for it. I had just have this very horrible suspicion that they're trying to lead us to such a polluted airspace that we have to pay for oxygen. And that's just not going to be okay with me. What's your thoughts on this whole cloud seeding thing? I know it's been around for a while, but I don't know if they've been implementing this ice strategy, which I think is just not going to work very well. I think that it is going to cause different effects to people, but who knows? What is your thoughts on this one? Whatever happened to the people that bought the Moldavite? Does anyone remember this? It was the end of 2021. Um, and people were buying this crystal called Moldavite and their lives were doing a complete 180. It was like good or bad. Where are they? Where are they? I haven't heard a peep since. No updates. And I don't think we talk about this enough. A little concerning, but it's fine. Yeah, that's a very good point. I'll add a Moldavite video to this video because if you're not aware what Moldavite is, I'll have an, a video explaining of what it is. Uh, I used to hear a couple of years ago people talking about Moldavite all the time. Apparently it's a piece of meteorite and if you carry it with you, it can cause extremely good luck or it can cause extremely bad luck. The outcomes are very random and unknown. I don't know if I necessarily believe it, but I'm going to go ahead and play another video describing what Moldavite is. Weird crystal. People are terrified of this crystal and let's talk about it. This is Moldavite. A little bit of background information. A long, 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 long time ago, a meteorite hit Earth and we ended up with a tektite known as Moldavite. This is a natural glass and people will tell you Moldavite is not a crystal, it is a tektite, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to call it a crystal. Now you might be wondering, why would someone be scared of this crystal? It's because this crystal will change your life and people are scared of change. This crystal will remove what doesn't serve you and bring you what you deserve. You might see people get on TikTok and be like, oh my god, I got Moldavite the next day my boyfriend broke up with me. Honey, that is because that boyfriend was not serving you. Same thing with people going on TikTok and being like, oh my god, I got Moldavite, I lost my job the next day, don't get Moldavite. That is because that job was not valuing you, and now you're going to get an even better job with better pay that you actually enjoy. There is nothing to be scared of. Moldavite does not have the power to ruin your life. If you're in a stable relationship, you have nothing to worry about. And here's the catch. You were going to lose that job anyway. You were going to lose that boyfriend anyway. Moldavite just speeds up the process so you get what you deserve even faster. Now let me tell you my journey with Moldavite. So about two years ago, my mom got me a Moldavite pendant and I loved it so much. I was so happy. I wore it all the time. At this point in time in my life, I was running my business out of my room. I had just started. I had maybe a couple thousand followers on TikTok and I had very, very toxic people in my life. Those toxic people left so freaking quickly and I was like, oh my god, I'm losing my friends, what am I gonna do? You know what I did? I focused on my business and my business just got better and better and better. I had a viral video and I got 40,000 followers, I was getting more customers, and I had my first live sale completely sold out, it was amazing. I got more in tune with myself spiritually, I started manifesting, I learned about the laws of the universe, and I saw a whole new side of life and how amazing life can be. 
Now, of course, there's ups and downs in every journey. So this was towards the end of my junior year, and I ended up failing my math class, and I was like, oh my god, I don't want to go to summer school. I don't want to repeat the class. What am I going to do? This sucks. I ended up having to retake math again my senior year, and that's when I met Tyler. For those of you who don't know, Tyler is my boyfriend. He is the best boyfriend in the whole world. He's so nice, amazing, sweet, supportive. He's the best. Had I not failed my math class in junior year, I would have never met Tyler in my senior year. That's why I say anything negative that happens after you get Moldavite is a blessing in disguise and something that needs to happen for something better to come. During my senior year, I started enjoying school, I had amazing grades, I had the best teachers, everything came to me easily, and I actually enjoyed school for once. Fast forward a couple months later, I ended up getting an office for my business because I couldn't run the business out of my room anymore. Everything was going amazing, I felt so happy and so accomplished. Fast forward a year later, and now I have a store. Now, of course, I still have ups and downs. Life isn't perfect. It never will be. But I went from being a girl who ran her business out of her room with toxic people in her life to having a store with the most amazing friends and most amazing boyfriend. Now, if you're ready to start your Moldavite journey, I'm having a Moldavite restock this Thursday, September 28th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. I will have big pieces and small pieces. I'll have nose piercings, earrings, rings, all types of jewelry. Please keep in mind that this is my story and my journey. It's not going to look the same for everyone. For some people, it could take less time. For some people, it could take more time. Success is not linear, but at the end of the day, this stone will bring you what you need, and it'll clear up your life. Well, there you go. That's the tektite, or crystal known as Moldavite. I can't for certain say that this individual's luck came from it or their trials and errors happened because of it, but I've heard a lot of people talk about this specific rock and its powers. Whether you believe it or not, I don't know. I have not heard anyone talking about it in a couple of years to the point where I forgot about it, honestly. It's what you used to hear about all the time like three or four years ago. So what is your thoughts on Moldavite? Do you think it's a real crystal, a real tektite? Or do you think it's false and it's just a rock that doesn't do anything special? Is Rust the future of lightning fast computers that work like the human brain? Generally, when you buy a computer, you have a choice between the regular hard drive, which is cheaper but not great, and a solid state, which is faster, less prone to failing, but costs a lot more money. A new kind of storage is being tested out. Racetrack memory. Very basically, it uses magnetic whirls, or really small magnetic nano objects that are pushed through racetracks. These little magnetic whirls would be the ones and zeros of your computer, and they fly via current. So there are no physical pieces needed to move things around. Fully lubricated. It would have more storage capacity, use less energy, and up to a thousand times faster than modern computers. One of the challenges is that current computers rely heavily on silicon, and magnetic whirls haven't been compatible with that. So researchers at Oxford have created a membrane made of hematite, which is a kind of rust. They chose hematite because it's anti-ferromagnetic, which means a lot of things, but here it can make those magnetic whirls, works with silicon, and won't emit some stray magnetic field. So it won't interfere with the other layers. There are a lot of implications for this kind of technology, not just faster computers and moving away from mining limited resources, but this is also kind of how the human brain works, which ultimately will leave more room for computing power for AI. Interesting, this is the very first time I've ever heard of this before. I don't know if it's true or not, but I could see something like this actually happening. And the fact that they can make it run with less energy just means that it's going to be more expensive. For example, the solid state drives, I have a terabyte solid state drive in my PC. It's an eternal one that has special specs that makes data reading really fast. Cost $500. I could only imagine what something like that's going to cost. But it'll be interesting nonetheless to see how it's implemented and what it will do for our technology. I am pretty interested in it nonetheless. These are the dumbest things bought by billionaires. Oh, <laughs> the last one. First of all, oh, look at this. Pretty nice house, right? I mean, I'd probably live in that. No, you wouldn't. This is a dog house. This is not a normal person's house. This is a dog house. This is Paris Hilton's $360,000 dog house, which the dogs sleep in outside of her multi-million pound mansion. This is literally the price of a semi-detached house in England. Like, what is going on? But it gets even crazier. Inside this dog house, it is fully furnished and even has heating and air conditioning. Quite a nice little necklace, actually. Probably quite expensive, but you know, some rich people buy that for their wives. Nope, it's a dog collar. It's a $3.2 million dog collar. But 
<laughs> what makes it even worse, this dog put it on once, lost it on that trip, gone. And they bought another one, and then lost it again. Now, look at this. This is a fully iced out Mercedes, and I know it looks pretty flipping sick. Now, this car belongs to the Saudi prince, and please, in the comments right now, take a guess at how much this car costs. Now, you might have said a few hundred thousand, you'd be wrong. You might have said a million, you'd be wrong. You might have even said 10 or 15 million, you would be wrong. In fact, it cost him $48 million. I can't believe people actually buy these. These pills literally just make your poop turn gold. Now, these things cost about $100 to $200 each just for one. They don't do anything apart from turn it gold. So for a box, you're looking at about one to $2,000. It's just so crazy to me on the things that people spend money on that are just... That's just crazy. I, I'm speechless. <laughs> Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph, you'll see we have improved even more since the last time I've showed it. 17% of the viewers that watch my videos are subscribed to the channel, but we're still at 80% plus of viewers that aren't subscribed to the channel, but keep coming back for more content. But to the 17 that are subscribed, thank you so much. I have a real question for you guys. Are we getting fucked with or are they testing to see exactly what we're gonna do? Within the month, we've had cell services go down, large pharmacy companies getting hacked into. We've had notice to start preparing and have supplies on hand. Now, Instagram and Facebook is down today. This is what I've been telling you to prepare for let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Is this all a coincidence or are they testing us to see what really is going to happen? Or are they testing mini shutdowns to see how it will go for a long term? Call me crazy, call me a conspiracy theorist, but I'm telling you, things are starting to look a little odd here and I think they're starting to line up. And this is why I say start prepping. It's never too late to start prepping until it's too late. Like always, make sure you like, share, and follow for great prepping advice. All day today, that's all I've seen on TikTok is Facebook and Instagram being shut down. I have no problem with my Facebook. I don't really use Instagram, so I don't know. And when I got it, I, I really don't use Facebook even. So it really never affected me or anyone that I knew because we just don't use Facebook. But to me, I think a lot of people are blowing this out of proportion. I really do not think it's that big of a deal. I've actually had this conversation with my wife a couple of times. I do not think people understand that Facebook... Meta or Instagram, any of those websites, even YouTube for that matter, they could go down any minute. People really depend on it. They're really invested into it, if you will. They have a lot of photos, a lot of memories on there, but it's not a long lasting platform. It's not meant to last forever. So it's it's going to hurt a lot of people when it does get shut down, but I'm I'm prepared for it, to be honest. I can't believe I'm saying this, but scientists have just answered the biggest question known to mankind. How were the pyramids built? <laughs> no, I'm still not going to believe it. So, one of the biggest questions out there that millions of people have been wondering for thousands and thousands of years. How were the pyramids actually built that amount of time ago? And technology didn't exist back then. They literally had... Nothing. So how the hell did they build this? But scientists have come out now and said they actually think they have evidence and know how they were built. So, alright guys, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Now, I mean, it'd be pretty impossible to build the pyramids nowadays, let alone back then. Nowadays, not because of the technology, just because nobody wants to be a labourer or work. But according to researchers, there was a crafty technique that helped reduce the friction when these giant blocks were being transported. And it's a lot more simple than you think. Water. So they would literally just pour water in front of the procession while they were pulling these stones, and the water would change the amount of force that was needed to pull the sledge. Now, at the University of Amsterdam, they actually tested this, actually proven by researchers there. So this is the most likely reason of how they actually transported these blocks, because how the hell else? I'm still not sold, though. I'm still not sold. I'm, I'm really not. But please, in the comments right now, tell me how you think the pyramids were actually built. Start an argument with someone. Hit that follow button, and I will see you in the next one. I don't know if I believe this or not, but it is an interesting one. I'll do a little bit more research and see if I can't find people out there actually doing this study because maybe this is how the pyramids were built. Do I think it is? Not really, but it could very well be. I'm, I'm not sure.
But we'll see in the future about further studies on this because it's interesting. It's, it's a big mystery that most people want the answer to. What are your thoughts after seeing this? Do you think that they've actually figured out how they were built? Or do you think that this is some kind of diversion to a greater truth? Because to me, I find it hard to believe that they were pulling all of this weight through muddy sand. But who knows? That could be the case. I can't believe this is happening. People are refusing to file their taxes for the first time in history. People have banded together and they're just flat out canceling appointments with CPAs, with H&R Block, and just people who prepare taxes or if they do their own taxes, they're just not filing. There's tons of videos of CPAs and accountants saying, hey, does anyone else have a bunch of cancellations suddenly for this year for tax season? Even my people who do my taxes, they were saying, hey, there's been tons of cancellations. What is going on? Well, last year... A lot of videos went viral of people asking other people, let's band together and not file and pay our taxes because they knew that they were going to owe money. And lo and behold, this year, 2024, when people started showing their testimony saying, hey, I'm actually owing money for the first time. I'm broke, like broke, broke. I'm not going to be able to afford my bills because they would use the tax money to pay their bills. So now people don't want to file at all. And they're canceling their appointments with H&R Block. They're not doing into a TurboTax. They're not going with CPAs or accountants. All because they do not want to pay their taxes. People have banded together and they stopped filing. What the hell is going on? I, I personally do not want to pay my taxes either. It's kind of like... The rich people that have their taxes, they kind of figure out ways to not have to pay their full taxes or pay taxes at all. And it's about time that the middle class to lower class individuals as well start jumping on the bandwagon because why? Why should we pay taxes? I get it's supposed to make states run and operate better. It just seems like it's going nowhere at this point. So to say there's a lot of people out there not paying taxes, I'm going to be very curious to see how that's going to end this year into the next year because I, I say, hey, go for it. Don't pay your taxes and let's see what happens because people need money, man. And the state and IRS just keep wanting to take more and more of it. What's your thoughts about this? Are you a taxpayer or do you try to avoid taxes or do you know good loopholes, which I do not expect you to disclose? Just say loophole if you do loopholes uh, in the comments down below because I am curious how many people are on this bandwagon or not. Can you believe it? This piece of meat was actually printed in three dimensions. Now, meat can be produced without killing a cow. The details, texture, and flavor are just like real beef. Considering that killing cows was too cruel, an Israeli tech company successfully invented artificial meat. They extracted stem cells from the cow and then cultivated them in a lab. These cells, suspended in a nutritious solution, divide once a day. When there are enough cells, they can begin printing the shape of the meat and the proportion of fat and meat can be preset on the computer. Now, the engineers have printed a steak, but it's not ready yet. In a sterile environment, this steak will mature into muscle on its own. Under the microscope, you can see the muscle fibers beginning to contract. This means the steak in front of you is really alive. In just a month, this steak will be ready to be served at the dining table. But, for a better appearance, the 3D printer will reprocess it. It takes at least several years to produce expensive and rare Japanese Wagyu, but 3D printing can be done in two minutes. Look at these details and patterns. They are identical to real beef. Even professional research institutions cannot tell the difference, because it is real beef, just grown in a lab. Once the meat is ready and served, you won't notice any difference. However, ironically, the nutritious solution used to grow the stem cells in the lab is actually extracted from pregnant cows. But don't worry, this artificial meat is currently very expensive and is unlikely to be seen on the tables of ordinary diners. What do you think about this? What are your opinions on this? For example, if you were a vegan that didn't like to eat meat because of the animal cruelty aspect of it, would this help encourage you eat this type of meat because there's no cruelty being done from it? It's just literally taking placenta from birthed cows and things like that to form meat or would you still just stay away from it as a vegan? 
Now, as a meat eater, would you eat this or would you at least try it? Me, personally, I don't think I have it in me to try it. I have a fairly strong stomach, but I don't know if I could stomach that one. <laughs> do you see colors with your eyes closed? If you do, stick around. My name is Christina. I go by Christina the Medium here on TikTok. And this is something that I experienced, especially when my mediumship was first opening. And I hear this consistently from clients and students. Why the heck am I seeing colors, especially like when I'm first going to sleep at night with my eyes closed? So let's figure out why exactly this happens. So one of the first things about this is very often, if you're seeing colors with your eyes closed, you are very clairvoyant. You have the ability to clearly see into the spirit world and see spirit energy. And something interesting that I learned during Meet Your Spirit Guide sessions with People Spirit Guides is they would say, my energy has a specific color. So let's say, for instance, I had somebody's gatekeeper guide step forward and they would say, look, my energy is blue. And they would basically say that that color was representative of how much they've learned over on the other side and almost like a representation of their evolutionary consciousness. So very often when people are seeing colors with their eyes closed, it can often be one of your spirit guides and spirit team members stepping forward and you're catching sight of their energy. The other thing that I've noticed about this is this could be one of your chakras within your body in terms of your energy body trying to get your attention. So we have seven primary chakras that align with the center column of our body and each has a corresponding color. So very often, if you were seeing one of these corresponding colors, it could be one of your chakra points within your body trying to get your attention, either to highlight an imbalance or perhaps that chakra just needs a little bit of extra love. Have you ever experienced this before? Let me know in the comments. I hope this helps. Love y'all. I've never heard of this before, so this was pretty interesting to me. I, as a kid, more or less, it's not as strong now. When I close my eyes to go to sleep or after I see a bright light or something like that, I will close my eyes and I can see primarily three to four different colors, yellow, green, red, and blue. For some reason, those colors are always kind of flashing in my eyes when I close them. I never really took consideration of it until I actually seen this video. Like I never really paid it much attention, but I do know for a fact that now, like right now I can see blue, red, and yellow, and green, maybe even purple. But when I was a kid, I know I could see it a lot better than what I can now, but it's definitely still there. Do any of you have this ability and specialties, I guess, because I, this was a new one to me. Don't you just hate when that happens? Do you believe the earth is flat? I know the earth is flat. Seriously? Uh, astrology and flat earth or true earth are symbiotic. You cannot have one without the other. If you have a ball and you are spinning, flying through space, chasing this fireball, your constellations would change every now and then. And our constellations have never changed. The stars have never changed. We have the same 12 zodiac signs that we had back in the Dendera stones in Egypt over 5,000 years ago. We're not moving. Every single ancient society knew this. The Mayans, the Aztecs, the Hindus, the Egyptians, every single ancient culture knew that we live in a geocentric universe, not a heliocentric where we are spinning, chasing this ball of fire while all of these other planets are rotating around us, while all of these other stars are rotating around us. If that was the case, Polaris would move, number one, which is the North Star, and it doesn't. Number two, all of the constellations would not rotate solely around Polaris, but they do. Therefore, we are the center of the universe. Believing in the Big Bang Theory is something that is very common today, where yep. people think you know we're the product of an accident and it, you know we don't have a creator mm -hmm. uh, we're just here to consume and live our best life and not live up to our potential but if you're the center of the universe that means that you're very special that means that you have a creator who is very conscious and cares about you and when you see yourself as being watched by these heavenly bodies above you 24 7 you start to take your life a little bit more seriously I really enjoy flat earth theory. I really, really enjoy it. I think it's fun. I think there's a lot of topics to be proven and a lot of and a lot of points to be made with flat earth theory along with globe earth theory. Again, like if you've seen one of my older videos, I like to call flat earthers flirthers, globe earthers glurthers, and I'm somewhere right in between because I really just don't know what to believe as far as the earth being flat or round. So 
Leave a comment whether you're a glurther or a flurther, or if you're just someone that's in between as well. But I do have a question to anyone that's watching my video in Australia. I know a few of you out there, hopefully you can answer that question. To us here in America, when we see the moon at its fullest, you can see the main crater at the bottom left of the moon. If the world is round from America to Australia, Australia should be near the bottom of the globe. The moon should have a circle at the top of the moon, the main circle. I'll see if I can't find some images to compare it online, if you know what I'm talking about. But if that's the case, if if the moon is in a different orientation, would that not mean that we are on a globe planet? Or do we have multiple moons across different continents? Because if that's the case, that's just crazy that they all look the same, just in different orientation. Let me know in the comments. All right, so I have been cleaning my basement out for the past few days. And if you see, um, let me get a light on. We have this little storage area and I found this cabinet pushed way back into it. And look at what I found behind it. If that isn't confusing enough, there's literally nowhere it could be going. I don't, I don't know if it's some kind of optical illusion, but now that I have my camera, I'm uh, going to see what's in there. What is this? It's cold in here. Man, I like videos like this. The Backrooms is always an interesting horror concept of subliminal space. I really enjoy this type of content. But imagine if you had a room under your house that massive. The electric bill's gotta be through the roof. So I'm gonna enter the pyramid. There's no one looking. So let's go inside the Great Pyramid. All right, so here we are. This is the Great Pyramid. I'm actually going inside the Great Pyramid. This is uh, pretty amazing. I don't know about you, but I've never been inside of a pyramid. It's interesting. I have to go up. Three feet. This little entrance is about three feet. I'm 
Why not just... Of someone's silly contraption. We're moving again. Excuse me. So they're working here, as you can see. Excuse me. I can help you. All right, we have to come, climb up this way. So we came up that little tunnel. And now we have to go up. So inside the pyramid here. This is as far as you can go inside the pyramid. Whew. Look how smooth, how perfect these stones are. And that was a really cool video. It was very long and kind of slow paced, but I've never seen the inside of the pyramid before and I thought that was really fascinating. And that last room that they went into and how smooth the bricks were and how echoey it was for such a little looking room. It was very echoey. That was really cool. I really enjoyed this a lot. I would love to have a trip to Egypt just to go see the pyramids. And if I could go inside as well, that would be awesome. Would that be something that you guys would like to see? Because I would be down to do it. Did y'all know Jeepers Creepers is based on a real story? Yep, the story that inspired the movie took place in Coldwater, Michigan. The story begins with a man named Dennis Depew. He was born in 1943 in Michigan. In 1971, he married his wife, Marilyn. And the couple had three children, two daughters and a son. It wasn't exactly a happy marriage. He was actually described as a bully, a very controlling and sullen, paranoid man. So in 1989, Marilyn filed for a divorce and it was finalized in December of 1989. On April 15th of 1990, it was Easter Sunday. Dennis showed up to pick up his kids from Marilyn's house. But the kids didn't want to go with him and a shoving and screaming match started between these two, which led to Dennis pushing Marilyn down the stairs while their kids watched. Dennis then picked her up and carried her into his van and told the kids that he was going to take her to the hospital. But after they left, one of the girls called the police, told them what happened, and the police went to check it out at the hospital, but Marilyn was never admitted. There was no record of them ever showing up there. During this time, another couple named Ray and Marie Thornton were out on a leisurely Sunday drive when a van sped up behind them and then around them. Marie noticed his license plate began with GZ and joked, geez, he must be in a hurry. 
A few miles down the road, they noticed the same van parked near an abandoned school. And Marie caught sight of a man carrying what looked like a bloody sheet behind the building. Obviously alarmed, the couple discussed whether or not to call the police. That's when the van came speeding up behind them again and rode their bumper for the next two miles. If you've seen the movie, you may recognize this from the opening scene. By this point, the Thorntons were scared. They didn't know what the driver intended to do, but then it abruptly pulled off to the side of the road. First relieved, they then decided to turn around to pass by the van again and get the full license plate, which was very brave of them, in my opinion. And when they did, they saw that the driver was now crouched behind the van, changing the license plate. They also noticed that the front passenger door was open and the passenger seat was soaked with blood. After that, they obviously called the police and the bloody sheet was discovered stuffed in a hole behind the schoolhouse. The next day, Marilyn's body was discovered by a highway worker laying near a back road by an old abandoned church. She had been shot in the head. Everyone knew that Dennis did it, and he was on the run, and a manhunt ensued. But Dennis had fled all the way to Texas and was using the alias Hank Queen. And somehow this creepy dude managed to even get a girlfriend there. And one day in March of 1991, nearly a year after this crime took place, the girlfriend, Mary, arrived home to find hank's van in the driveway and when she went inside he told her that his mother had fallen very ill and that he had to go home immediately he then asked her to make him some sandwiches for his trip in reality he was trying to keep her away from the tv because that day unsolved mysteries aired an episode about dennis Depew killing his ex-wife and he didn't want his girlfriend to see his face he left as fast as he could but it didn't take long for one of mary's friends to recognize him and call that hotline four hours later dennis and his van was spotted by louisiana state troopers and they chased him for 15 miles while mississippi troopers set up a roadblock at the state line when he reached that roadblock dennis tried to plow through it but warren county sheriffs were able to shoot out two of his tires he shot at the cars and tried to ram them off the road, but his van was forced to a stop. And when officers approached the vehicle, they found Dennis dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And Dennis was gone. But in 2001, the Creeper was born. Now, in 2024, it is now the 23rd spring since the Hollywood hit was released. So y'all know what that means. They definitely took a huge turn with Jeepers Creepers. They could have made a really good serial killer type of movie just out of the real scenario as is. So why'd they turn him into a full-on flying monster? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you're interested in any of these clips, links will be in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.